we have the gang back together and we talk Bachelorette, Olympics, and Petunias. It's so fun to see your faces. I haven't seen either of you. Well, I haven't seen Lindsay and Courtney in a long time. At least I've at least talked to you. Too long. I know. Scott, are you here somewhere? There you are. I'm here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. It's an honor to be here once again. <laughs> to see us. <laughs> hey, we we've got to check in on the status of the of the Christmas movie. Have you had a chance to watch it, Scott? <laughs> the Hallmark movie. It's a, I can't it's even a, remember the name of it. So if you haven't, I don't. I'm I'm not gonna. I'm still working on the write up on that. <laughs> maybe it. coming christmas 2021 <laughs> yes. Right. yes so Lindsay, when you need a special months. guest for your your hallmark series for christmas time scott's got them all summer he's <laughs> yep. been working all year on it <laughs> i won <laughs> all year <laughs> on one on that one you might as well just wait for the 2021s to come out because they'll probably be out in august i imagine that's okay. true that. That's what then. you're gonna do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Labor Day weekend. Scott reviews Hallmark movies. I mean, it's so hot in Vegas that time of year. You just stay inside and watch Hallmark. Stay movies. inside and watch Christmas movies. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. It involves some sort of tension. The couple falls in love, and the rest it snows, and the rest is history. <laughs> and there's a kiss at some point. Uh huh. Usually in the snow. Very predictable. And yeah. typically great outerwear as well. Mm-hmm. Always good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to also snow while it's sunshiny outside. <laughs> so there's going to be some How do they sort make of that snow happen? I know. It's magic. There'll be a festival of some sort. Mm-hmm. Or maybe something mm-hmm. you have to mm-hmm. save in order Parade. for Christmas. Oh, save. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In order for Christmas to, you know, happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, That's Scott, you're done. Is. You just mix them up a little bit. I got it already. From, they knew each other from <laughs> grade school. It's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's storming really bad here too, so I hope the thunder isn't a problem. <laughs> Let well, me know think, if it if you hear it really bad. Well, Reagan was delayed this morning flying to LA um, mm. to. Uh, to get out of Dallas because it was storming so bad. They got a weather delay. That's so. crazy. So Lisa, crazy. if your dinner date is late. I now I've got my hot date tonight with Amy's husband. <laughs> Thanks. That's so fun. I joked to someone Amy, earlier about that. I was I, like, well, I claimed Lisa. So really Reagan really doesn't get her anymore. So it's that, fine. I, I I signed that contract. So I, we're all, <laughs> yeah. the, the terms are very clear to all the parties involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy, I saw you had some crazy travels trying to get back to Tulsa. Um, it was, so, you know, um, I went on a girl's trip for, with my classmates from school and we went to Napa, but obviously you can't bring a two-year-old with you to Napa. So, mm-hmm. and then Reagan was at a bachelor, our bachelor, a bachelor party, not a bachelorette party. That's later in this podcast. Um, and so I dropped in with my parents uh, in California, flew up to Napa, came back, stayed overnight, picked him up. And then we had two stops to get home. And when we landed at home, Joe Biden was there, uh, which would have been fine. But apparently he was leaving downtown and on his way back to the airport. But someone drives really slow. So 45 minutes mm. later, they finally opened up the airport that allowed people to get picked up. So, oh my gosh. Um, you know, if anyone who's ever, none of you probably ever had a toddler that's potty training, but, um, when they are, you have like a 30 second warning when you have to take them to go to the bathroom. And so we're out there and, and Rory says, mom, I have to go potty. And I'm like, crap, I I can't load up all the bags and like get us down the escalator to the bathroom in time. I'm like, well, buddy, you might end up on a no fly list one day, but here's a bush. (laughs) Here you go. Like that's all I've got. So, so if my oh child my can't God. fly in like 18 years, it's, it's absolutely my fault. So just so you know, <laughs> that is hilarious. Just, just when you got him a passport and now the poor kid you can't know? get on a plane. <laughs> kid can't go to Cabo and no, no tortilla chips for him. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
um since we last talked uh miss courtney has lot launched her uh launched her Inside. brand tinge yes Ooh. finally april 27th which seems like yesterday and mm. forever ago kind of all in one but so exciting just in time for for summer and here in dallas we haven't had very um sunny weather not so many pool days but i'm looking forward to it being kind of a lifesaver for the pool days post pandemic <laughs> mm. i've used it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're right it works in the pool doesn't come off mm -hmm. my legs I... look reasonably tan you know i mean <laughs> <laughs> can't beat it you know i mean it works i, I liked i enjoyed it so there you go there's my sales pitch that's all i have Hey, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> um, Lindsay, Lisa, what's new in your worlds? Nothing. Nothing? You went on a road trip. You just went I on did. a road trip. I did. I went on a road trip first time. It was great. It was, felt Ooh. very normal. Very, very normal. I'm not sure Mississippi knew that COVID ever happened, but mm -mm. that was, uh, it was weird to have your mask and have it on and people look at you kind of funny or have it in your hand and say, do I need to wear my mask? And they're thinking mask, what is this mask you speak of? I don't <laughs> understand. So that was interesting. And then I went to New Orleans and they don't care about it outside of a restaurant, but their restaurants are still at 50%, which I think is very oh, strange. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very strange. So you could, you couldn't really get a reservation anywhere. Um, and then once you did, it didn't feel very New Orleans-y because there was mm -hmm. hard, they, 50% is not a lot of percent. And so it just felt weird and odd, but, and I, wow. that surprised me that Louisiana wasn't up there a little mm -hmm. bit more because they're surrounded by a bunch of states who are, woo, let's go. So I don't know what's going on there, but. I, I wonder was just in Chicago. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I wonder, Lindsay, if it has anything to do with um, I know New Orleans was one of the first cities that was like so yeah, bad because yeah. it happened just right after Mardi Gras. And yeah. so I wonder if they're just being like super cautious now. Probably I, so. Spending a lot of time in Louisiana will say that that's not happening in other cities yeah. outside of New Orleans. <laughs> they're for <pretty> New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bourbon Street was about as packed as you could get. But I guess it's because nobody could go in anywhere. So it's still just real tight and mm. people are everywhere and Canal Street Makes people sense. are everywhere, but you're not going in yeah. anywhere. I mean, yeah. there are still people at the door uh, counting. Wow. Um, yeah. That's, That's interesting because so I was in Chicago on Sunday. And we went to brunch and you didn't have to wear them. And then we went to Nordstrom and you also didn't have to wear them in Nordstrom, which I thought was just... I don't know. Chicago is just one of our biggest cities. So I thought, you know, they'd be yeah. a little more on lockdown, but no, they're, yeah. you know, We're if you're vaccinated. wearing them in Houston, everybody's really? wearing okay. them. Yeah. But um, I mean, I, I think it's just Houston. I don't know if any other part of the, I mean, my parents are from East Texas and they, nobody ever wore them there in rural, rural places. So I don't know, but we still have to wear them at, I don't think you have to wear them at um, baseball games though anymore, but you okay. still have to wear them in grocery stores and restaurants until you sit down and all the things, churches, all stuff. Houston, just trying to keep it together. That's and then there's right. Lisa in, in LA who, <laughs> what do you have to report from, a, from Los Angeles? From, my, from the West Coast. Um, we're making a uh, comeback here. Uh, we, I think we open up June 15th and I, I'm not sure about the math situation. Um, I think it might be like a business to business type situation mm -hmm. at that point. But um, yeah, it's exciting. Things are starting to feel normal here again. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm having more in-person client meetings and business travel on the horizon. I haven't left the state in like six months, but that's, you know, we're lucky here in California. We have good weather and can yeah. split out to the desert or go up to wine country or go to the beach. And so, uh, but it's, it, it, Feels, it feels a little bit more normal, so it's good. We just have, um, th these are Southern California problems, but we have June bloom now. So it's all gray and cloudy until about two or three o'clock. Mm. But that's just it something, could be something, worse. We, something we have here. It could be worse. I'm, I'm not gonna complain, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sure someone listening is going, that woman, do you know it's 110 mm-hmm. degrees here? They're probably in mm-hmm. Phoenix and it's maybe 105, <laughs> yeah. but still, or Vegas with Scott, it's fine. Yeah, Scott, how are things in Vegas? Hot and windy. Miserable. So it's like a blow dryer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scott, Scott has been frequenting uh, the, our, our Vegas Golden Knights are in the playoffs in the, for mm-hmm. NHL playoffs. And so Scott has managed to work himself into a couple of playoff games at home. So, Big playoff oh, games awesome. so far. And we're at oh, 100% fun. capacity with no Ooh, masks wow. now. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. <laughs> you're back. So. Everybody's vaccinated. That's why you get Everybody's vaccinated, vaccinated, I guess. Like That's exactly right. Or that's wow. why you download a vaccination card off the internet. One of the two. <laughs> How does it feel in the arena, Scott? Is it kind of like a surreal feeling just on kind of the post COVID? It is life? weird. It's weird. I went to a game in March with like 2000 people there. So now we're up to 18,000. So it's much different. Wow. Yeah. It's just wow. Wild to be a part of it. Last night's game was good. Heard- God, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, I like how you flipped into last night's game there, Amy. That was yeah. good. Did you like that? Was good. <laughs> I mean it to be that when it came out, I was like, oh, that was good. <laughs> um, I had heard, I don't know if Dodger Stadium is still doing this, but I had heard that they had like a vaccinated section where people were sitting closer to each other and then a non-vaccinated section where you had, I think, two seats between between guests. Mm. I, I'd rather sit in the non vaccinated I'm vaccinated, but I'd rather almost sit where I have more room. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you go on a That's date. A it's point. like taking someone to like the hard rock or something where you can't hear. You're like, oh, this is lovely. You sit over there. <laughs> I, I, I don't have to talk to you. It's perfect. No, there's a lot of teams that had done that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of teams that ran like vaccination drives and different things it's I mean it's really interesting how sports have kind of like stepped their way in there and saw like hey we're the higher power like we'll come in and step up and do these things it's really fascinating like the whole and we Mm -hmm. talked to some friends who live in Australia over the weekend and they don't they still don't have vaccinate they don't still have vaccines Mm -hmm. and they're in Perth so like they're they're not in a, a rural community like they're in a city and so it's fascinating how you know, you watch the world roll out. So we don't have to get into like politics and all those things, but it just, it was fascinating to me that, you know, you're in Australia. Like I'm, I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. So it was just really interesting. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. there you have it. So, well, I guess we could talk a little bachelorette. I guess we could talk, I guess the Olympics, because if we do this, you know, every couple of months, Olympics will be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. Um, because Simone Biles is basically going to win the Olympics. I don't know if that's a thing, but she's going to just win the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. She's Always probably going to go out and beat Usain Bolt while doing like backhand <laughs> springs or something. It's, you know, <laughs> the rate she's going. Yeah. Um, but let's, I mean, first and foremost, um, let's, let's do, I mean, we need an icebreaker. I'm really concerned about us not liking each other. Um, <laughs> let's talk about favorite ballpark food. Oh. And Scott, since you were just at an arena, it's close enough. You get to go first. Um, there wasn't much food had. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe some some popcorn. <laughs> we'll go with that. But nice and messy. Did, didn't Dad tell you to never eat the popcorn? That uh, didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What, rumor, what do we need to know about stadium popcorn? Rumor has it is that they they like just bag it up after every game or race or whatever event you're at and just like take it back and i can't say this from personal experience this was when like our parents worked the the nascar um, concessions booth in vegas to raise money for scott's um boy scout troop maybe basketball team something's got both both whatever yeah but i can confirm don't drink the beer that is in the beer that comes out of a tap um, cause one year when I worked at the, the D backs, a beer line broke above our broadcast apartment and it smelled like dead fish in the office for mm. six or seven days. Oh no. no. Get it when it comes out of a can somewhere or get a white claw okay. or something. So okay. if you were going to answer <laughs> draft beer at a ballpark, 
wrong answer. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right Lisa what's yeah. your what's your go-to what's your favorite ballpark food well I think it, it can be like sport specific too right and and whether you're indoor or outdoor so I'm gonna go and I know we've talked about like our favorite um stadiums in the past but there's something about the hot dogs at Fenway I don't they just they mm -hmm. hit different there and I mean I even had like my own specific stand I would go to like there's only one stand I would go get my hot dog at um so, I, you know, the, I think it's the only time I actually eat hot dogs is if I'm watching a baseball game in person outside. So I'm going to go hot dog. So is Fenway, so like a Dodger dog is like a smaller hot dog, more bun. Is a Fenway hot dog like Costco where it's more hot dog, less bun? Like how's, what's the ratio? It's very important. I feel like it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty normal. It's, it's almost like a backyard hot dog. This, this one particular vendor I would go to and he would grill them just perfectly. So oh, there you see, it's yeah, not that big, it. long hot dog, like the Dodger dog. It's not like that. It's just a normal hot dog. Like you could eat two, which makes it even better. I mean, just, just saying I might have done that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Courtney, Lindsay. I'm a hot dog gal as well. I feel like I typically only eat them in a stadium setting or when I'm with my family at the farm. So they both bring like really kind of nostalgic memories, but I wouldn't just, you know, go grab a hot dog much no. anywhere else. And so, yeah, hot dog with just a, a little bit of mustard for me. No ketchup. No ketchup. It's a controversial topic. You know. Yeah, yeah it's a controversial which, topic. Yeah. Rumor has it, if you like ketchup, there is going to be a massive shortage of ketchup here soon because there's an ingredient <laughs> missing. So be sure if you like ketchup or an ingredient that's been greatly affected by the pandemic, not missing, um, about to be missing and, and backordered greatly. And so rumor has it, I was just, the only reason I know this is I had dinner with one of my friends who works at CH Robinson and she said, they're seeing it kind of from a logistics and supply standpoint that she was like, if you love ketchup, grab a hold of it. <laughs> wow. Stock up, note kinda, to self. Kind of interesting, yeah. Your Heinz condiment pack is going to be missing. <laughs> you, you yeah. buy <laughs> no ketchup. Uh, well, yeah, wasn't, we'll there a shortage, wasn't there a shortage last year of the ketchup packets from everybody doing so much takeout? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so ketchup's having a hard... A hard go of it here, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and, and rental cars. I hear you have to, you know, yes. pledge a life to rent a car nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yes. Someone was telling me they sold, and this could be completely wrong. So if you're listening and you hear this, then it's, it could be completely wrong. But they sold a lot of their fleets during COVID. Mm -hmm. And so hence there are no cars. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's. I heard it's, in Hawaii, people were renting U-Hauls because they couldn't get wow. rental cars. My goodness. <laughs> That's that crazy. is wild. Yeah, my dad recently, um, his his my brother got into a, a car accident, which is totally fine. And my dad's vehicle, and so my dad's been facing the rental car shortage himself. And now, you know, once he was able to get a rental car just for a brief period of time, um, now it's really difficult to buy a vehicle because same thing mm -hmm. on lots. There just aren't any any cars on lots. So. So interesting. I, mean, yeah. I rented a I rented a twelve passenger van in in Napa, so there was no that. problem. <laughs> no one wants those because you can't put. It's probably maybe against the law to put twelve people in a van. I don't know. I mean, it require was masks. Your experience driving the twelve person van, Amy. Oh my gosh! It's at one point I looked down. I'm like, I'm going eighty on the highway in a twelve passenger van. The wheels are certainly most going to fall off here. So. Um, luckily there are, there's not a lot of parallel parking. So that was good. We weren't in like the city. So that was a, a mm. useful tool, but the people in the back are very far away. <laughs> so there's that. that so, like if those were your children, you'd have to start throwing things in the back at them. Like you can't just yeah. around, like, grab them and just shake them. Um, and the rear view mirror is basically meant to look at the people in the back of the car because you can't see anything out the back window. So, oh my gosh. Um, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty good though. We, we had a girl who, when we booked the trip, 
Um, she was not pregnant. And when we went on the trip, she was. So she's like, we might as well just get rid of our driver and I'll just drive the van. <laughs> so like, bless That's her amazing. heart. Like, I would have not done that. I would have been like, you guys are all too tipsy for me to drive you around. Walk. <laughs> Why? <laughs> But we digress. So Lindsay, your perf- your favorite ballpark yes. food. I would say a soft pretzel is where I land. Yeah. If they have those cinnamon sugary ones, mm-hmm, I'd pick that too. But I love a soft pretzel. If it's a if it's a soft pretzel, I love it. Cheese or mustard or both? Cheese. Mm-hmm. Not mustard. Mm-mm. I'm not a you can give Courtney fan. the mustard for her yeah. hot dog. It's fine. So give me her ketchup and I'll be well. Yeah. I'll, put it on my well. I'll put it in my purse for later. <laughs> I love that. Have you ever been to, has anyone ever been to the giant stadium in San Francisco? No. Nope. They have no. the, their thing is garlic fries. Ooh. And so when you walk in the stadium, it smells like garlic. Um, it's they're they're pretty incredible so mm, if you ever go to san so francisco good. go and have their garlic fries eat a hot dog because that's a good complimentary thing that like you said none of us mm-hmm. after the age of like five eat on a regular basis <laughs> so yeah that that is a that is the good go-to so just so you know i mean if you need to pick me up okay so you know, we're really here, let's be honest, we really have like one big topic we need to talk about. We'll talk about the Olympics and things, but we really need to talk about The Bachelorette that is happening uh, today, tonight. Um, I have done little research minus uh, the last podcast we recorded about the five athletes that are on um, The Bachelorette. So I'm really intrigued to hear who we need to watch for. Um, the marketing is a bit... Um, Cheeky is the wrong word. I was going to say a little bit tacky with the whole, mm. re, here's what the buzz is about mm-hmm. for everyone who doesn't remember that Katie brought an adult toy to the first, oh, mm-hmm. to the last uh, Matt James season. So maybe Lindsay can give us a little rundown. And if you mm-hmm. ladies and gent have any, uh, any thoughts, would love to hear them. Yeah. Lindsay's our expert. It, yeah. I think it's a, oh, you're too kind. Um, I think it's an interesting season only for the fact that she was not even in the top five, six, seven, I don't think she was, she left a long time, maybe from when it was eight and he had to cut it down to four. She was in, she was in that. So usually we have a runner up or maybe a third runner up that is considered the bachelorette. Now, Michelle, who got literally the runner up she hers her season is later in the fall and I get that and everybody loved her I just found Katie an odd choice then I decided it has to be some sort of shtick like you say where we ever since I feel like Caitlin Bristow's season there's had to have been a thing that is attached to the person meaning he's the he's the virgin guy and he's the first she's the first black girl and he's the first black guy I feel like there's always some sort of label that is attached to them and maybe that's what they're attaching to Katie now whether she wanted that or not I have no idea but I think that she has adopted the personality that ABC has sort of thrust her into and it's a very sexual personality of Um, this is how I am and I'm very proud of it and she very well could be that way but like you say the word tacky keeps coming to mind too because I keep thinking that's going to be every single conversation or you know some guy is going to bring a sex toy tonight I don't do spoilers at all because I find it more fun to go through the season without them but she was an odd choice for me. I've heard a lot of people saying, I really don't care about this season, but you know, they're just saying that because you get, you get sucked back in no matter who it is, which is why I love the show. So I think she's going to be fine. I think there's going to be a push of, she doesn't like bullies and she doesn't, she is her own person. And it sort of feels like what Claire was, but Claire was a hot mess and she crashed and burned pretty quickly so it mm-hmm. feels like they're trying to redo that, that feeling of I'm woman, hear me roar. I'm tough. I'm confident. You're not going to walk over me, which again is a fine way to be, but it's just going to be in your face. I think a lot more than 
let's find love because there's going to be you're not here for the right reasons and if you don't like it hit the door now but from what I see in promos there's a lot of tears by the guys so I don't know what Katie does to make them cry or other people do to make (laughs) each other cry but there's a lot of tears I also think that because they've had Tasha's season and Matt James season in quarantine slash COVID days and and Katie is kind of adjacent to that still I think they're gonna learn how to do that better because I'm sure Mm -hmm. you you all felt during Tasha's season I just kept saying bless her heart they're gallivanting in a fountain that's out front of the hotel room and that's their Mm -hmm. day that's pretty sad or you know Matt James (laughs) had to go to the woods every other date because you know we got something in the woods going on so I felt better for them because they were at least cold and Tasha season everybody sweat to death and it was just gross now we're in New Mexico so we might have some more sweating but I think that those showrunners have probably figured out a better way to do dates this go around is my hope this go around because I personally do miss now we're going off to Vienna or we're heading off to New York and the other coast Mm -hmm. I miss that a lot um so I I think it's going to be fine. Again, I think they're finding their feet in um, coming out of COVID. And we'll just see. I feel like she has a million guys. I I have looked at the cast roster. It feels like there's 50 of them. But I think there might only be 30. But I think she only cuts it down to 25 tonight. So we're going to have a lot of guys to sift through and remember their names somehow. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll start like date, like number three episode. Then you start remembering their names. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I look at it a lot. So where people in my watch party say, how do you do that? I was like, I look at them way too much. So I know way too much about these people and their bios and like the guy who's, whose career is former baseball player. Okay. <laughs> what do you do now, dude? <laughs> you were a former baseball player. What's your job now? Those are always mm-hmm. the fun ones. But it looks like there's a lot of chotch factors in there too. I have four or five that look like they're going to be uh, chotches. And then I think a villain is already kind of boiling up and we'll just see. It's going to be weird, I think, not having Chris Harrison there. And uh, I'm interested to see how they're going to have Caitlin and Tasha step in as they're not calling them hostesses. Uh, they're just saying they're there along for the ride to help Katie. So I find, I, I'm, I think that's going to be interesting to see how that happens. And then, um, and this isn't a spoiler either, because I've seen it on a promo, Blake from Claire slash Tasha season, the mountain man guy with the beard, he comes back for this season too. So that's wow. kind of, yeah, that's kind of interesting, which I think now is a trope that they're doing. We, mm. we always got to have somebody kind of come back and say, oh, I think you're awesome. And well, I would love to date you. So we'll see. It'll, it'll be good. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm pro bachelor franchise. So I think it, I always think it's going to be good. And I always think they're going to find love and live happily ever after that <laughs> happens. So know, Lindsay, a third of the time. Right. I feel like we have a lot of Bachelor stuff in the works here. So you've got Katie season, and then Michelle's is right behind it, starting filming here soon, right? Yeah. And then Bachelor in Paradise is that is happening, in Paradise, right? Yes, Bachelor in Paradise is coming right after Katie. So Katie's finale is on the wow. Monday, and Bachelor in Paradise starts the next Monday. It and starts it? eight, yeah, August. I was say, um, who was it that you told me that was on Bachelor in Paradise that I was shocked? I heard that David Spade is involved in some way as like a guest host, maybe, or something. And I'm like, really? Uh, David Spade. I mean, is it 1992? (laughs) The answer is no, it's not 1992. I find it, what I have heard is that they're trying to get comedians to guest host on the on on the beach but that doesn't I don't understand what that means and they said David Spade is the only one who signed the contract Mm. to be in which I also think you know Harrison was never there even though he is funny he was never there for a ha-ha funny reason so I'm unclear Mm -hmm. why they would want a comedian to come in and and mix things up I'm not sure about that but allegedly 
there are going to be several people. I also heard that um, Wells and his girlfriend slash fiance, I think Sarah Highland, they're also somehow connected to the show too. So I don't know if they are something different than the comedian people. We'll see. And who knows who's I wish they would just the Bachelor in Paradise too. Mm, yeah, I wish they would just make Wells the host of bachelor yeah. in paradise i think he would do a really good job yeah okay he's so we got funny so that makes that would hilarious be funny, yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so we've got okay i feel like we've got bachelor non-stop until like october we've got katie season then we roll right into bachelor in paradise and then do we know when is it michelle when her season is they say premiering? fall and and it always kind of depends on when Dancing with the Stars is on because they mm -hmm. traditionally flip flop. So typically we don't have anything in the fall because it is just Dancing with the Stars, and then the Bachelorette starts back up in January. So I'm not sure. They said that hers will definitely air in the fall. I don't know what month that means because she wanted to finish school with her kids. So she, cause she's a teacher. So she wanted to finish out this year and then she'll probably be filming this summer. And then I don't know if it'll roll right after bachelor in paradise or not. She's just been, I've just heard fall. Let's see. Seems logical. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's really interesting. And you know, Lisa and I were talking about it some of us are just like, some of us love, maybe Lindsay too, <clears throat> love Chris Harrison. Mm -hmm. And so to not have that sort of mainstay is, is not uh, quite as appealing. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard line to, to walk because you understand the reason why he stepped back. You understand the reason why ABC has not asked him back. However, mm -hmm. a lot of the, a lot of the push in the pool is for somebody to be educated and to do the work, to figure out all of the things that you say incorrectly and, and every, and how you think incorrectly. And so I feel like they have, they have not fired him. They have not said he's no longer with the franchise. And so I don't know if that is an open door to make those people who are diehard Chris Harrison fans to kind of hang in there a little bit, uh, because I, I, with, with the idea of Rachel and Matt James with the idea of they're back together now, and, and I'm assuming she has done the work that he needed her to do to understand, and they are now a couple I would think that other people in the franchise would be able to do the work and get that second chance, but maybe they don't want, maybe ABC does not want him on uh, television, like primetime television. It's not like Rachel gets to go on anywhere and say the things. I will say that part of me, like a little slight part of me wondered if they were ready, even though he is, he is bachelor royalty from being there since the very beginning if they were ready for a younger person to kind of take mm. that reign a little bit. And this was um, an, an easier way for them to say, hey, Harrison, why don't you just step aside here and, and, and let's let even Wells or somebody within the franchise um, come in. I don't know. I think it's interesting that they have two uh, women coming on to act mm -hmm. as hostess hostesses whenever that role is traditionally played by a guy. So maybe that's something that they're dabbling with too, is, is would we want um, that to change every season or do we want it to be a guy and a girl or do we want it to be no one? And I think it's, they're, they're definitely playing around with it. And, and anybody who thinks this will kill the franchise, it's, it's not gonna kill the franchise. The, the, the franchise makes way too much money way too much money for for the Harrison component to go away for it to I mean it, the the ratings may lower maybe and pr might based on what all happened during that James season they might lower but I don't think it'll I don't I think the bachelor's here for a while because it makes so much money and it's so easy to film and cheap to film and probably even cheaper now that they're not having to go all over God's green earth 
to different dates and the different, I mean, they can shoot it in a short amount of time and here we are. And that may be what we do now is that we're going to start turning out back in the day. They used to have a couple of bachelors a year and a couple of bachelorettes a year. I mean, I would think they had two in the spring and two in the fall and some sort of bachelor pad nonsense. Do y'all remember that Ugh, bachelor pad in the middle? And they might be doing that again since it's, they don't have to go anywhere and do anything and they've got the model figured out. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting season to see what happens. Do you think the travel will ever return like it was kind of pre-pandemic, Lindsay? Or do you expect now that they're realizing they can film it more quickly, mm-hmm. more efficiently and on a lower budget, do you think they might mm-hmm. stay? I think they will. I think that is definitely a possibility. I think when things maybe get to normal in a couple of years that they might go to a destination and then just stay there and they're never Mm -hmm. at the mansion in the thing. But it's also very, very expensive to take all 100 people who are in charge of the show and take them anywhere else other than where they all live and can go home to their own beds and sleep at night. So I don't know. That's why they've got these resorts and they're just renting out the entire thing. And most of them just stay there, obviously. And they're in the bachelor bubble and they're quarantined and nobody has the COVID because I'm sure they make the test. And that will be, I'm assuming, the norm for at least the next couple of seasons, I would think, Mm -hmm. after Michelle's. Because I think that I would think they're doing that with Michelle, too probably some more mm-hmm. cold like they did with Matt just flip-flopping back and forth but yeah mm-hmm. yeah who are your front who are your front runners based off of your spidey sense that you have I've got great you, spidey sense that's good right because I need to pick time. like 15 of them or whatever for our, I know. Our bracket. so <laughs> let me get our bracket today and I thought that 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 and then I swapped up and it was like you need 10 more choices and I thought good lord <laughs> okay, yeah, let's yeah. Just yeah. so yeah so if you're, if you're listening we you know Lindsay's wonderful podcast <laughs> I hate green beans which covers the bachelor bachelorette um all the bachelor franchise hallmark channel all the good things in pop culture <laughs> that you need to know um I the best recaps Lisa turned actually that's how I met Lindsay was Lisa turned me on to her podcast for the recaps of the episode of Bachelor and Bachelor episodes um but uh that's how we met essentially and so um but we're doing a podcast our podcast we're, we are doing a podcast right yeah, now yes, yeah. um we are doing a bracket <laughs> for the Bachelorette and the first pick I think out of 30 guys well 29 and one in a mystery box I read yeah, somewhere I don't, I don't know but I think that, it's like but, pick yeah. 20 or pick 15 yeah. or something it's a it's- lot of picks of a people lot. who all kind of look the same and That's probably exactly eat, right. lunch, eat lunch meat and I mean that kind of thing well something something I think needs to be said this time that's happened for the first time so my my co-host for all of my bachelor podcasts is some guy in Austin and he he and I are about as opposite as you can get which is what makes it fun and he's so saucy and I mean if y'all could hear what I edited out it it, we probably need to have a whole another podcast like after dark or something what I edit (laughs) out that he says but for the first time ever I always make him choose five and I choose five three of them were the exact same guy so I think that says a lot from and all we do is read well all he does is read the bio and then I go and snoop on the Instagram I I connect I have a google doc that anybody can look at I can send it to y'all and you click on the guy's name and it takes you straight to their instagram account so you can kind of figure out who they are apart from the bio because some of the times you think what who's asking these dumb questions like what's your favorite flower I don't care what your favorite flower is but I care if you have a lot of model pics in your instagram and you're just pose 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 one thing I will also say is this year's crop of guys none of them are famous. There's one guy that has maybe 30,000 followers and he is uh, some sort of motivational speaker type dude, but everybody else just has lower thousands, which was not the case for Matt James's season. There were a bunch of people who were already kind of influencery. And so that's Mm -hmm. what I enjoy about these guys too, that they're, they're, they at least appear normal. They may have deleted their Instagram accounts and started fresh and whatever 
But the first guy that we both said looks great is a guy by the name of Greg. And I think um, he's, I think that he's going to be that kind of guy next door, a little bit of a softness to Katie's just, ah, and she's out there and nee, 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 and I think he's going to calm her down. So I don't know mm. why I think that, but I love his Instagram account. I think I like to, I lean towards the ones who look very normal or have some sort of interesting something, which brings me to Justin. He's another one. He's this good looking guy who uh, does artwork on the side. He's an artist. And when I say artist, I mean, he can, he's pencil drawing Beyonce and it looks just like her. He's doing all this fabulous art for his community. And that sort of stuck out to me that he's this mm -hmm. really burly looking guy who is an artist. So I think she's going to like that softer side. There's a guy named Kyle that I think is really cute. According to his Instagram, there's a guy named Connor B. We have two Connors. I like Connor B. His Instagram looks very normal, but then I believe this makes me very sad for Connor B. I believe he shows up as a cat for his oh. icebreaker. And that just makes me oh. sad for Connor B because uh, Katie has a cat that she loves that's on her social media all the time. And so her cat, I can't remember her cat's name, but he's kind of like a little character in her influencer persona. Um, there's a guy also, this was some guy's pick. And after I listened to his reasoning why I am now on this guy's train, it's Michael. There is a Mike, but there is also a Michael. And he is right out the gate. He is um, a single dad. And I think that's interesting when they don't hold that, you know, from their bio. So he's in your face, single dad. And then when you go and look at his Instagram, you see that his wife passed away of cancer and he's a really big nonprofit mm. cheerleader for the cancer community. And I think he's doing a lot in his own backyard for that. And I think she's going to like that. And I think whenever you go on a reality show, because you know, women in his life just said, you got to do this. It's time. Let's go. Let's just try it. And you've been through such trauma as your wife passing away of cancer and you were left with the little baby, uh, you, you, you kind of just slide right through to the realities of life. You don't BS mm -hmm. your way through it. You're not there for anything other than, I mean, this is how my life is and this is, and you're, you're not fake in any way I would assume. And so that's what some guy was saying. He's like, there's something about him that makes him real and don't really care that he's there not in a bad way not that he's not there for the right reasons but he kind of just doesn't put up with all the drama and all the stuff and he had a little Mr. Rogers sweater on which we hardly ever see and I thought that was cute for some reason so he's one <laughs> to watch out for too so those are those are the ones that I would say keep your eye on Okay, well, when I'm in so class, a little, paying attention, I'll, I'll pick my bracket based yes. off of your suggestions. <laughs> a little plug for Lindsay's podcast. If, if any, anyone doesn't want to watch or isn't inclined to watch this, this season, Lindsay, just listen to Lindsay's podcast or read her, her updates or blog posts, and that'll keep you in the know. So you, you, you're still connected to what's going on in Bachelor World. I, I rely heavily and Lindsay and some guy in Austin to keep me up to date. Yes, thank you. Especially now that we all have lives again and we may not have time to watch all these Bachelor seasons. Exactly. Uh, you can listen to Lindsay in the car on your walk doing whatever you need to do. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we don't, again, we don't do spoilers. So we're right half the time is our motto. So I mean, get it right. <laughs> In baseball terms, you'd be batting 500, which means that you would be in the Hall of Fame. So oh, in our minds, you're in our Hall of Fame. Thank you. I've been so, doing it long, I think long enough. So hopefully. You're Bachelor Royalty too, Lindsay, in, in our oh. world. <laughs> That's very sweet. I was thinking the other day, you know, I started doing this in 2003. Let's marinate in that sentence for just a minute. And I thought, am I going to get to the point to where, you know, I could be this kid's mother now. And so I'm, I'm looking at it a little bit differently from a 
maternal standpoint, I don't have kids, but it just feels like a little creepy now to say the the 23 year old is so good looking. I'm like, if I'd have been a promiscuous teenager, I could have birthed him. Great. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll recapture just a little bit now where I'm going, now that's just nonsense. Why would you have ever done that? Why are you dressing up like a cat? Come on. So I think it's going to be, um, I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to channel my, my funny a little bit. And of course, you know, I make up half of it. So it's, it's great fun. I, I enjoy doing it. I've been doing it a very long time and it has, gosh, it has spun out into other opportunities that I would have never imagined. So thanks for that, Lisa. That was very kind. Of course. So Scott, um, if someone were to ask you what your favorite flower is, how would you respond? <laughs> <laughs> the alive kind <laughs> the ones at trader joe's i mean is this where you spoil Not for just... everyone and tell me of a garden and um like a whole flower patch and roses and things at your house big big petunia fan <laughs> I, I hear those thrive in the desert. <laughs> Absolutely. So after Scott gives us the Hallmark review, he's going to then get us a how to uh, flower review. flower flower arranging classes. Yes. I mean, seriously, why are we asking these guys what their favorite flower is? I think that's so strange. And then they'll say, you know, what what is your biggest dream? My biggest dream is seeing LeBron James play basketball. And I thought, well. You could make that happen. Let's make that happen. <laughs> Just work hard, people. Or my dream Let's is set our to, heights higher. Yeah, my dream is to visit Italy. It's like, okay, well, you're not going to do that on the season, but maybe we can make that happen if we try hard enough and you know reach for the stars it's just very it's uh, that's why again that's why i like going to the instagram account you can you can see their personalities it's so much better than the abc bio so much better yeah it's it's uh we you know i'm clearly i've really talked i'm at school right now finishing wrapping up my, my last week in my mba and there may be some cocktails had during this week and so i was like well, what are we doing tonight everyone's going to dinner okay who wants to just come into my room and bring some champagne and we'll just make a drinking game out of every time someone says I'm in it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. or I wasn't going to be on this show, but then someone told me you were the bachelorette. Mm -hmm. So I signed up, um, you know, like all these different, you know, there's all these kind of kitschy things that they're always going to say. Right. And so it's like, well, we just make it into a drinking game, which I'm sure if I Googled it, there's one out there. Oh, yeah. um, but it's like this, it's like, it's, it's all it, the funny part about this show is like, we've been like, as Lindsay, you said, like you've been watching it forever. We've all been watching it forever, but yet we still get sucked in. We're like, okay, well, what's happening next week? I mean, the formula used to be, remember the formula in the beginning was the last person who stepped out of the limo was the winner. Then they changed that up. And then all the things have just gone to, to crap. Basically, you know, you had Clara throw a, a hitch in the whole season. So, you know, they keep us somehow, they keep us guessing. Um, I feel a bit like a puppet. Sometimes, you know, that they've, they've got me going, but granted, I'm still here. And we had, we had guys today at lunch who were like, well, if that's what you guys are going to do. You're watching the bachelorette. I'm in like, what do I need to bring? Like, Pick up some cocktails and come on I over. <laughs> we have a three, we have a three person couch. 12 of us should fit just fine. <laughs> what time is class tomorrow, Amy? Class is tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern. Oh, 7.50 report day. for announcements. Um, oh yeah. Goodness. So, um, last Small night, sips of champagne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last night I was the winner who everyone else went out and I was like, I have to work and get the newsletter ready for tomorrow. Um, I fell asleep with my laptop on my lap in bed. So I was a real winner last night and, but I didn't feel better this morning when everybody else rolled in smelling like their cocktails from last night. And I was like, well, at least I got a little bit of sleep. I mean, so I'll, I'll FaceTime you all if you want to, you want a bachelor uh, drinking party, you know, although Lisa's on the wrong time, I'll ruin it for Lisa. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Three well, hours ahead of you. My, my hot date with your husband tonight. So. Oh, that's right. I forgot. That's right. I forgot. I'm otherwise committed. <laughs> Din Tai Fung? It's no, a Din Tai Fung going to pizza. Oh, pizza. Going to okay. Pizza. Bougie mm -hmm. pizza. Bougie pizza. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's no such thing as bad pizza. 
hopefully not. <laughs> okay. So you're going to hang up from this and everyone's going to go and pick their bachelor bracket, including Scott. Yes. Come, I want to, I want to ask Lindsay who she said there was a villain. Yes. Earlier. I think what's ooh. who's the villain. Let me look real quick. I think his name's Gabriel. I believe. Is that somebody? Yes. Gabriel. And, and that's more, um, well, I think Gabriel is potential chotch factor and with a game mm. with a with a a villain layer on him carl k-a-r-l is another one that they are projecting to be a villain in the promos where they're saying i didn't come here to make friends you know how they always do that he said and then he says i came here to get followers and so I think, I, and who knows if that was edited together, you know how you can't ever tell, but that, but mm -hmm. right now they're projecting him to be um, a followers guy. And might I say, he is the one that has all the followers. He's the motivational speaker. guy. Mm. There's also a guy named Landon who looks sort of like, Hey, Hey, ho, ho, with finger guns a little bit. He's a basketball <laughs> player guy with the curly blonde hair. That's sort of fro -ish. I hope with my whole heart that he is the guy everyone loves and not annoying. So that he's a Dallas guy. Isn't he, he is. Listening. Yes. And he played basketball here in Houston. So I'm, I'm oh, wow. rooting for the Texas angle, but I, it, I, I'm just very nervous. Again, his Instagram has some model shots, but they are funny. So he's being a dork okay. in him. So my, my hope again, with my whole heart that he is just not, a major bleh, downer but and if you want to know who's crying all the time it's Trey so I feel like if we are shown him crying so much that he has to make it a little bit so he'd be a good one for your bracket too mm -hmm. and then there's a guy named Brandon who you know from his profile pic which is all I have to go on again he he looks a little bit of a chotch and a guy named Jeff, who might also be a strange, a little bit strange. His profile bio says that he's the oldest vampire around or something like that. So mm -hmm. kinda, oh. mm, yeah, you kind of just sort of wonder about Jeff. But man, there's there's a lot of guys that have potential. So like I said, I was able to straight out the gate pick about 12, and then I had to pick something like 10 more so then I just sort of threw darts at the wall and figure out where they land but yeah we'll see it's a it's a great it's a great bracket I'm very excited I'm always excited about the bracket I love it and so for the winner of the bracket they'll let they'll get a first copy of Scott's book how to garden and I, maybe called I love petunias <laughs> I love petunias <laughs> <laughs> Good. okay so we have like a few minutes left so what we're going to wrap this up with we're going to do a rapid fire um your favorite this is going to be out of left field by the way oh. favorite summer olympic sport oh. got it because we're going to we're going to bring we got to bring a full circle we got to throw in a little bit of sports yeah you know the best part about this is we have beautiful brilliant women and a brilliant man on this podcast so that's really what we're all about but you know we have to tie in just a little bit of sports because that's what we do mm -hmm. so we go from for uh finding love on a on tv as a sport mm -hmm. to uh <laughs> summer olympics which starts i believe like july 23rd ish whatever that friday is so scott go favorite summer olympic sport rhythmic gymnastics i knew we were going to say that <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I took that yeah. from everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All like right. The old, the old school vibes with the, oh, the ribbon. Get in yep. shape, girl, ribbon. Yes. I love mm -hmm. it. <laughs> love it. All right, Courtney, go. Gymnastics, also, I'll say artistic gymnastics, just to be a bit different than, than Scott. But I think, too, I love diving. I love watching diving. Mm -hmm. All right, Lindsay. I would say, uh, well, rhythmic gymnastics was obviously my choice too, but I would say uh, trampoline is fascinating to me and not always on the television. She got to YouTube that business. And I also like beach volleyball. Mm, that's a good one. 
Lisa, what do you got there? Um, gymnastics is the obvious choice, but I also like the equestrian sports, mm. whether it's dressage oh. or the jumping. <clears throat> I like it. I mean, I would have to say, I think gymnastics, I mean, especially as a, as American, you have to love gymnastics. I think the women just always are phenomenal. Um, I have to say though, I'm excited for soccer, women's soccer, especially, yeah. um, the men's soccer, U S men's soccer team. Um, if I remember correctly, Scott, or no, I'm thinking world cup. Are they in it? No, no, they're not in it. Okay. I didn't think so. But then I questioned myself as those words came out of my mouth. Um, but I'm kind of intrigued by surfing. Um, mm -hmm. in Tokyo is the first time it's been an Olympic sport. So I'm kind of intrigued by this surfing. Um, and I'm always intrigued by like the water things because I don't like water sports because if I get tired, I'll drown. Mm -hmm. So, um, water polo, diving, synchronized swimming, all of those things are just fascinating to me that these people can, you know, all the ladies can flip on side on up, be upside down the water, not get water up their noses and yet make all their legs spin <laughs> in the same direction. So um, it should be fun. So maybe we'll, we might, we might have to pull together like an Olympic version of this podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are toying with the idea of, of starting a different podcast or an additional podcast, um, essentially about interesting people. And so of course we will reach out to all of you for your respective, um, careers and life experiences. So, um, be prepared for that. But, uh, you know, I think that the, that's what I really love about this podcast is we get four really interesting people, not including myself on here that have neat backgrounds. And it's so cool to be able to sit here and talk to you. And we all talk about random things. And I, I think it's just so fascinating. I love, I love, it feels like just getting there with a bunch of girlfriends for a zoom call and Scott. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Um, okay. So because this is what we do, Courtney, tell everyone where to follow you, where to find you, um, where they need to buy, uh, their summer legs from. <laughs> yeah, you can follow me and Tinge at Tinge Beauty on social. Um, and you can purchase the Tinge Tint, which is essentially a water and transfer resistant body makeup on our website at tingebeauty.com. Excellent. Lindsay, where can they find the podcast? You, it's called I Hate Green Beans, and you can find it wherever you find your other podcasts. <laughs> Perfect. And what, and when, and after your, what, usually a day or two after each episode, you have your recap with you and some guy in Austin. Yes. I'm very professional and would do it the day after, but because he's a lawyer and, you know, does things in the courtroom, I have to wait on his schedule, but it's never past <laughs> Wednesday. It'll either be Tuesday or Wednesday. And it's always worth it. You will, you will laugh out loud, like cackling to yourself in the car. I promise. Thank you. Um, Lisa, you, you know, you share with us what you want to share with us, where we can find you, your favorite book to read for the summer, whatever you want to share with us. Well, you can find me in LA, <laughs> Los Angeles, <laughs> um, checking out all the fabulous restaurants we have here. Um, yep. and, uh, yeah. You can, you can typically find me wherever Amy is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I, I want Lisa to just be in charge of my life and all the food I eat because she always, if you go to LA, just, just message me directly and I'll just send her a note. She has the best restaurant recommendations. So, um, I highly, highly recommend, uh, her just using her words of wisdom and just don't question it. Don't even look at the menu. Just go. <laughs> Lisa, um, what's your favorite, yeah. what's your favorite like top restaurant in LA? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, it's probably a, a tie between two. There's one called Republique, uh, which is a uh, kind of French ish food. They have great pastries, but it's very cool. The building it's in was Charlie Chaplin's studio. So I think that's kind of cool that wow. there's some history to the building. Yeah. And then there's another one called Babel, which is um, kind of upscale Mediterranean food in the arts district in mm. LA um, that I'm just dying to get back to. They have this lamb neck shawarma, uh, which is just to die for with some homemade pita. Amazing. Yum. So I think, I think LA rivals New York and Chicago for food. So I'll just put that out there. I love Bold that. statement from Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> And Scott, where can they find you? 
besides at a Golden Knights game? At lastnightsgame.com. Right. <laughs> or at last night's game on Instagram. <laughs> or Twitter. Scott runs our Twitter or account. Twitter. So everyone should make sure to check in on that. It's insight into Scott's brain. Petunia posts will be coming. <laughs> Stay tuned as always. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. I love, love, love seeing everyone's face. It's so nice to have the gang back together. And uh yeah, I look forward to the next one. We'll we'll discuss Olympics. And of course, make sure you go fill out your bachelor bracket, um, which you can find on the homepage at lastnightsgame.com. And uh, yeah, we'll have prizes and all kinds of fun stuff. So do it. And it's just basically bragging rights. Um, and as long as we beat Scott, that's really all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, gang. Appreciate you. All have right. a great day. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. you too. So Bye, good gang. to see you all. Bye. 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 Well, that's it for this week. And we thank Scott, Lindsay, Courtney, and Lisa for joining us once again for another episode of Women Ask All. I hope that you were as entertained as I was. I love these episodes. I have so much fun talking to this phenomenal group. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you like the free content you receive every week, head on over to wherever you get your podcast and hit that subscribe button. Of course, If you're an Apple podcast user, please leave us a review. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If you're looking for some sweet swag to dress up your summer, head on over to our Last Night's Game merch store at lastnightsgame.com. Click that shop header. There you'll find all kinds of interesting clothes and fashion and fun things to spice up your summer. We might say that these are clothing that starts a conversation. Use the promo code SPORTSCURIOUS for your listener discount. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you here next week for another episode of Sports Curious. Stay safe, friends. Wash your hands. (laughs) 